Uh, this is overpopulation problems. This is chapter two, key issue four. This is looking at the world health threats. And the learning goal would be that students will be able to explain the relationship between the epidemiological transition stages and the demographic transition stages. The key concepts are epidemiology, famine, pestilence, pandemic, and degenerative disease. All right, for the epidemiological transition stages, these are the causes of death for each of the demographic transition stages. Um, epidemiology comes from the word, um, the branch of science that's concerned with epidemics, with widespread diseases. So epidemiology is a study of um, large numbers of people and the diseases that they might have. Um, so that's where the term com epidemiology comes from. Now, stage one of the demographic transition stage is before any industrialization or medical revolution when there is a high crude birth rate and a high crude death rate. So the typical diseases or illnesses that are found in this stage one that go along with demographic transition stage one are famine, which is not enough food to eat, and any kind of infectious disease, pestilence, such as um, cholera or um, the, the flu, influenza, something that you would um, get um, by being contaminated by somebody else and then you know, maybe needing some antibiotics to, to cure you from that. Um, so the Black Plague would be um, an infectious disease that happened during the Middle Ages in Europe. A lot of people died, spread from fleas on rats that supposedly came on ships from, Af from uh, Asia. Uh, famine, just not having enough food. Cholera is a disease that's um, spread from dirty water and people not having a clean water source and it easily spreads rapidly causes people to have diarrhea and become and vomiting and become really dehydrated and die within even um, hours, especially if they're children. So these diseases could not be controlled, often killed people in the prime of life, and so people had a very low life expectancy during this stage. Stage two, which goes along with the demographic transition stage two, where the birth rate was high and the death rate is dropped because of improvements in medicine, in sanitation, in healthcare, and knowledge of healthcare too. So the deaths that are associated with this stage are an improvement, a medical improvement, in, the, in reducing and treating the spread of these infectious diseases that we saw in stage one. So stage one, you saw infectious diseases that there was no cure for, so people died very early. Stage two is almost like the solution to those infectious diseases. So people um, were able to live and not die from these infectious diseases. The example from this was John Snow's map of cholera deaths in 1854 in London when he saw that there was a cholera outbreak in London in certain um, houses and he mapped where the deaths were and saw that it was around this broad street uh, well pump and that the, the dirty water was coming from that. So because of the Industrial Revolution in places like Europe and North America and the medical revolution of the spread of medical practices from places like Europe and North America to places like Asia, Latin America, and Africa, we see a decrease in the crude death rate and treatment and um, 
treatment and understanding of how infectious diseases are spread and coming up with um, medicines to treat that and also understanding you know, how they spread like John Snow's map, then we see people able to survive from these diseases. So stage one and stage two kind of go together. Stage one is the diseases that are infectious, that spread with no um, solution in improving life and so people die early. Stage two is now, okay, we have solutions in how to treat these infectious diseases so people don't die of them. Stage three and stage four go together just like stage one and two do. So stage three, which is typical of a country in stage demographic transition stage three, where you now have a declining crude birth rate, people choose to have fewer kids, the death rate continues to decline. We have medicine that deals with things like tuberculosis and cholera and the flu. And so the diseases that are typical in a stage three country um, are not the infectious diseases because we've dealt with them, but the diseases that you would get from either being old, these are degenerative diseases, or chronic disorders associated with people's lifestyle. This is your human created diseases, such as heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. So stage three, people either die of old age, all right, they just get old and they die. So these are degenerative, people degenerate. Think of to generate is to start something new, to degenerate is the opposite. So it's almost like you know, people get old and just say their bodies just get old and they die just from natural causes. So people either die from just being old or they die from maybe some bad choices that they made in their lives. So maybe they chose to eat way too much and they gain a lot of weight and so they get diabetes and they have to take insulin and you know, maybe they die from the complications of diabetes or they don't exercise and they gain a lot of weight and so they have a heart attack, so they die of a heart attack or they smoke or they um, you know, do something else, you know, uh, get, you know, toxic chemicals, you know, in their body because they live in a, a toxic environment. So they might get, they might get cancer. So stage three are stages where they don't get, they don't die because of infectious diseases. That was dealt with in stage two. But the diseases are from old age, degenerative, and lifestyle choices, chronic diseases, lifestyle choices that they bring on themselves by not taking care of them, them uh, eating too much, not exercising, smoking, all right? And these are not infectious. People can't get heart disease from being sneezed on by somebody else who has a heart disease. These are from lifestyle choices. So these are stage three epidemiological diseases. Stage four is the solution, or just like stage one and two went together, stage four is now looking at these diseases and finding a solution, prolonging life, delaying these degenerative and human-created diseases. So we, we know that, you know, eating too much and not exercising and drinking too much alcohol and smoking too much tobacco, so those are all unhealthy. And so they create diseases based on our lifestyle choices that we see typically in stage three. So stage four, now we know that those are problems. So there have been medical improvements to combat those problems, in a sense deal with those problems so people can live longer. So the demographic transition stage four is where people continue to have fewer kids and so we see the crude birth rate continuing to fall as, as the crude death rate is still low and we approach a zero natural increase rate. So in this stage, people live longer because we have medical improvement or knowledge in how to delay these degenerative diseases. 
also medical improvements have prolonged prolong life for um, diseases like bypass surgery. So you have a heart attack, you can do bypass surgery and clean out your uh, your arteries or um, or bypass them so that your heart can continue pumping in a healthy way and not have clogged arteries. We know that diet and exercise helps to reduce um, heart attacks and diabetes. We know that it's important to not smoke because it causes lung cancer. And we don't want to drink too much alcohol because it damages our liver. So we are delaying these degenerative and human-created diseases through stage four and our knowledge and medical improvements just like we saw this in stage two. The medical improvements in stage two allowed us to have solutions to deal with the infectious diseases we saw in stage one. Now, just like there is a debatable stage five demographic transition stage where we see a decline in, um, continued decline in birth rates and the death rates are now, even though they're low, they're starting to rise above the birth and we see a declining population. So there is also a stage five epidemiological transition. And this is the re-emergence of infectious and parasitic diseases. So this is almost like going back to stage one where we had infectious diseases and we couldn't survive because we didn't have the the medical know-how in stage one, well, we see us going back to stage one because of things such as microbes evolving and people, as they use more and more antibiotics and as microbes evolve and become resistant to antibiotics, antibiotics are not able to um, uh, cure the infectious diseases. Uh, we saw this as some strains of malaria became resistant to um, DDT, which was used to as a pesticide to kill the, the malaria, the mosquito, malaria mosquito. And so, as the malaria is adapted to the DDT, then they no, no longer were were killed by spraying the DDT. Also, just a plug not to use antibacterial soap. We use have too much antibacterial soap and that goes into our water system. We have then the microbes would evolve and um, basically become resistant to all the antibacterial soap in our you know, water system that they will no longer, this antibacterial soap will no longer combat bacteria on our skin. Um, Anti-vaccination. Um, and you, sometimes parents choose not to vaccinate their children against childhood diseases. There um, was a study that was found to be incorrect that incorrectly linked vaccination with getting diseases like or becoming autistic or becoming mentally retarded. Well, that has not been true. It's been found to be false, but that view that this still is held, even though it has been proven to be false, is still held widely and some people choose not to vaccinate their kids. So when you have a growing population that is not no longer immune to diseases such as measles and mumps, when somebody gets measles and mumps in that society, then you could have this rapidly spread disease across the society and people die from it. When in the past, we, um, we've, been, we've pretty much eradicated those diseases. So this is contributing to the reemergence of infectious and parasitic diseases is that people are choosing not to become vaccinated and it, it um, threatens the broader society when this happens. Poverty is still also something that contributes to infectious diseases. Uh, tuberculosis, TB, is still a major cause of death in LDCs. Just um, not too long ago, there was a cholera outbreak in Haiti um, you know, after the hurricane and water was contaminated and people would bathe and drink uh, water um, that they bathed in the rivers and they got cholera and it spread rapidly and many people died just from this cholera outbreak. So poverty and, um, and the overcrowdedness of places in, in LDCs um, also contributes 
to this reemergence of infectious diseases. Improved travel. Our world has become so much more connected. People fly from one place to another, and if you don't have the resistance to a disease in one place and you bring that disease across the world from one place to another, um, then you've got this widespread uh, epidemic of something like the swine flu, which we saw not too long ago, and that came from um, I think Mexico and was spread all over the world because people no, did not have the resistance to that. AIDS is also, um, it, it's another infectious disease that has spread worldwide with improved travel. It started in Africa um, and it is considered the most lethal epidemic in recent years, killing over 20 million people, um, most from Africa, but because of our space-time compression and more and more connectedness in our world. People have um, traveled all over the place and we've seen this um, have a devastating effect on the number of AIDS victims in the world. And here is just a cute little um, cartoon that I thought went along with um, re-emergence of infectious diseases and parasitic diseases in stage 5. So bugs, superbugs, become immune to the, the medicine that cures these infectious diseases, and so there's no longer any medicine that can cure the disease. And the World Health Organization is, is fearful about this. There have been recent news reports um, that they are feel like they're on the verge of um, a global epidemic of diseases just because there have been this wide re resistance to 